Just like a relationship, going on a trip with a gadget is one of the best ways of finding out how well you and your partner work together. So to really test Asus' first go at making a laptop with a flexible display, I took the ZenBook 17 Fold OLED on a journey across four countries in nine days. And while there are a few issues that still need to be addressed, my experience was surprisingly positive and actually renewed my excitement for the category as a whole, especially after Lenovo's ambitious but flawed first try back in 2020. Now, that doesn't mean you should run out and get one because starting at $3,500, the ZenBook 17 Fold is far from affordable. But for all the foldable haters out there, Asus's latest effort has proven it's way too early to write off the next wave of newfangled flexi laptops. For the ZenBook 17 Fold, it's almost as if Asus took the blueprint for the ThinkPad X1 Fold, put it in a photocopier, and then hit the enlarge button. Sure, the ZenBook is a bit prettier thanks to some leather panels and a bit of lovely frosted glass around back, but it's clear Asus didn't try to deviate too much from Lenovo's formula. We have a big, flexible OLED display, with no obvious creases, I should add, that's augmented by a built-in kickstand and a detachable magnetic keyboard that neatly fits inside the gap that forms when the system is folded in half. All told, while it's still a bit bulky, measuring 1.25 inches thick in clamshell mode, with a combined weight of just over four pounds, including its keyboard, the ZenBook 17 Fold is still lighter than a lot of similarly sized traditional laptops like Dell's SPS 17. That said, I'm not trying to neg Asus's lack of originality, because by going with the bigger 17.3 inch display, it created a hybrid that finally works as both a laptop and a portable all-in-one desktop of sorts. In laptop mode, the ZenBook 17 Fold's larger screen, which is up from 13.3 inches on the ThinkPad X1 Fold, provides a system that's similar in size to a 12.5 inch notebook. This is great when you're trying to get work done on an airplane trade table or anywhere else space is a premium. And because the detachable keyboard sits on top of the bottom half of the screen, you still get a very familiar mousing and typing experience. But when you get to a hotel or a cafe with a bit more room, that's when the real magic happens. By fully deploying that 17.3 inch screen, suddenly you have a ton of extra space for productivity, gaming, okay, well, light gaming, or anything else you might wanna do. Does it take some extra effort? Yeah, but at the same time, it's actually kind of practical. And it doesn't hurt that it reminds me of playing with Transformers as a kid. You can prop up the ZenBook using Asus's built-in kickstand while positioning the Bluetooth keyboard wherever you like. And because there are two Thunderbolt 4 ports on different sides of the machine, it's easy to plug in peripherals or a power cable when you need to recharge. Aside from laptop and stand modes, you can also use the ZenBook 17 Fold as a big tablet, which allowed my wife and I to watch She-Hulk while waiting at the gate for our flight. Even with some sizable letterboxing, it was really nice having a bigger display to look at as opposed to huddling around a six inch phone. There's even something Asus calls book mode that feels kind of like you're holding a giant magazine. Though similar to tablet mode, the sheer size of the screen makes both tablet and book modes feel a bit too unwieldy to use with any sort of regularity. Unfortunately, Asus didn't copy the same sort of mil-spec A10G durability Lenovo provides with the X1 Fold. But even so, after more than a week of being tossed in a bag that got thrown under seats or into multiple overhead cargo bins, the ZenBook made it out unscathed. So not quite army grade, but as far as my battle testing goes, it gets a pass. Oh, and the leather case Asus includes with the ZenBook is pretty nice too. As for the screen itself, Asus touts a peak brightness of 500 nits for HDR content, Though in more typical conditions, I found the ZenBook outputs closer to 350 nits, which is plenty bright for general use. Around the outside of the display, there are half inch bezels that do look kind of chunky compared to other modern laptops, but given the amount of bending, flipping, and moving of the screen you do with the ZenBook, I don't think I'd want them any smaller, at least not until Asus can shave some weight off this thing. The real highlight of the 2560 by 1920 OLED panel is all the bright colors and deep blacks. Look, I know OLED screens are becoming more popular on premium systems, but the vibrancy you get from them is even more impressive on a flexible display. The screen's one small weakness is its shiny coating, which likes to pick up fingerprints while also being a bit more reflective than your typical glossy panel. I also wanna mention that despite its display dominating the ZenBook's design, its quad Dolby Atmos speakers sounded better than I expected. To handle video calls, the ZenBook features a nifty set of cameras which include a five megapixel main shooter and some IR sensors, which can be used for facial login or to detect your presence. This allows the laptop to automatically lock itself when you walk away for some added security or to turn on the screensaver to reduce battery drain and prevent potential burn-in. The one quirk is that because the ZenBook was designed to be primarily used in desktop mode, you'll get vertical pics and videos in laptop mode, 
which isn't exactly ideal for meetings. The ZenBook 17 Fold's performance is pretty well rounded with an Intel Core i7 1250U CPU, 16 gigs of RAM, and one terabyte of storage. Performance was generally smooth, and I only encountered a few hitches once the battery dipped below 5%. That said, the choice of a U-series chip means the ZenBook isn't quite as powerful as many traditional clamshells, with systems like the Dell XPS 13 Plus and the Lenovo Yoga 9i posting higher scores across a number of tests, including Geekbench 5 and PC Mark 10. In short, it can handle typical productivity and even a bit of very casual gaming, just don't expect much more than that. All right. So far, everything has been pretty positive, but without getting overly doom and gloom, it's time to talk about the ZenBook's flaws. In theory, its magnetic keyboard is the perfect companion for a flexible hybrid. It connects wirelessly over Bluetooth, and its tailored dimensions mean you can tuck it away neatly inside the display while traveling. You even get 1.4 millimeters of key travel, which is pretty great on a peripheral this thin. Unfortunately, actually using it feels like trying to give medicine to an upset baby because no matter how nicely you ask, it feels like it just won't listen to you. At first, the keyboard struggled to stay connected, which meant I had to unpair and repair it every time the ZenBook went to sleep. I also noticed its touchpad was jumpy and erratic, sometimes bouncing around without me even moving my finger or being slow to respond to my commands. To make matters worse, while the system is supposed to automatically recognize when you lay the keyboard on top of the bottom half of the screen in laptop mode, for some reason, the ZenBook simply ignored that procedure when launching certain apps. This causes everything to jump back into full screen mode until you lift the keyboard and drop it down again, which is downright frustrating, especially when you're trying to play a game. Furthermore, while the keyboard has a USB-C port for charging and excellent battery life, you still have to charge it separately. This feels like a weird oversight compared to something like a Surface Pro and Microsoft's type covers, where you never need to worry about connectivity issues or keeping the keyboard topped up because they're an integral part of the system. But with the ZenBook, while it looks like a core component, the keyboard feels more like an afterthought. Also, I have to mention that on a device this expensive, some of Asus's software and preloaded blow is rather irritating. In addition to McAfee LifeSafe constantly bombarding you with unnecessary notifications, trying to find important settings in the My Asus app is a real chore. But the thing that really pisses me off is that Asus's GlideX app which lets you turn a spare tablet or phone into a secondary display, is limited to 720p and has embedded ads, unless you pay to unlock the extra plus, pro, or ultra tiers. I mean, come on. This is a very expensive and sort of experimental premium device. Those perks really ought to be free. And no, limited time promo deals don't cut it. When it comes to longevity, one of the big fears with a flexible convertible like this is that all the extra support required to hold everything together takes up valuable room where a battery might go. But to my pleasant surprise, the ZenBook 17 Fold fared better than I expected. On our local video rundown test, it lasted 14 hours and nine minutes in desktop mode and an even better 1526 in laptop mode. Now that's a good mark for any portable PC. And as long as you're not overloading the processor, the ZenBook's battery holds up during everyday use as well. After using this thing for the better part of two weeks and lugging it across half of Europe, I've got some thoughts, so bear with me. At first, I was constantly worried about breaking it during my travels, but once those concerns faded, I started to really appreciate its flexibility. Simply thinking about this thing as a standard two-in-one isn't quite right because it's a lot more adaptable than that. Depending on the situation, the ZenBook 17 Fold changed from being a big tablet for watching shows and movies to an ultra portable that let me work in tight spaces to a portable desktop that I could use as my command station away from home. I'm usually the kind of person who longs for the comfort of a second monitor when I'm not at home, but those yearnings didn't hit nearly as hard on this trip. And to my delight, it performed well in all of its roles. On top of that, between Windows 11 and Asus' Screen Expert software, it's much easier to choose the right app layout for whatever mode you're in. Also, the decision to include a bigger 17.3 inch screen gives you more room for work or play while also making content look great. However, where the ZenBook falters is with its software, its wonky Bluetooth keyboard, and of course, that $3,500 price tag. But what's really stopping me from loving it is the short time I've spent with Lenovo's 2022 ThinkPad X1 Fold. That's because for Lenovo's second gen flexible laptop, the company came up with a brand new chassis featuring a more compact hinge, a revamped keyboard, and a redesigned stand. Lenovo also retained its mil-spec durability and stylus support, neither of which you get on the ZenBook. So while the ZenBook 17 Fold is an admirable first attempt, it feels more like a polished take on a slightly dated design rather than a true rival to Lenovo's next-gen foldable. But what do you think? Are you still excited for the advent of foldable laptops? Let me know in the comments down below. 
And don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned to Engadget for more news, reviews, and hands-ons.